like to welcome you to our special public forum session on textbook choice. I am Chairman Matthew Magista, and it is my, uh, and I would like to welcome you to our special public forum session. Now, as you know, our district has not introduced a new line of American history textbooks in over 10 years, mm -hmm. and due to voting patterns from the General Assembly, uh, textbook funding has been cut in half in that same amount of time. Now, we believe that it should be a district priority to introduce a new line of textbooks for our students. Our students will learn best from the textbook, the most foundational, most wide-reaching element of every curriculum. <coughs> Oh yes, I'm very sorry, Ms. Franklin, but of course, teachers are our most important part of the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, teachers are way more interesting than textbooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, teachers are way more interesting than textbooks. Mr. Douglas' stories and projects would be reading that stupid book. <laughs> What's the thing of developing early onset back problems from carrying all that stuff around? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me. Um, can you please refrain from uh, having comments before we open the floor, young man? Thank you very much. <laughs> now, before we begin, I'd like to introduce the representative from America's Breast Pro Scholarship um, Ameri uh, Textbook Development Incorporated, Mr. Masters. Um, BS Pro is currently the front runner in the bidding process, and Mr. Masters will be on hand tonight to answer your questions and take your comments. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Andrew Jackson V. Uh, I'm here representing Best Scholarship Pro Textbook Development Incorporated. So we at BS Pro uh, really urge you to consider our new offering. We can trace our roots back over 80 years providing textbooks for great states like North Carolina and Mississippi. <laughs> All the way back to the very roots of American public education. So we've made this textbook to fit the needs of the teachers, the students, and fit in with the curriculum. Thank you. Now, I would like to remind everyone that when addressing the adoption of this new American history textbook, we hope to abide by one of the founding principles of this nation, freedom of expression. Let's make sure that everyone gets a chance to express their opinions openly and thoroughly during the three minute comment period. Please respect the time and opinions of everyone gathered here to share. We are thrilled to have our session live streamed with additional coverage by the News Observer and the Travel Hill News. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Hello, my name is Sophie Wilkins and I'm a seventh grader at Lakewood Montessori Middle School. I have read the sample passages that have been passed out and I'm pretty concerned with what I see. On page 71, in the Mexican-American War section, it portrays Texas as a great place to be bought, <laughs> unsurprisingly. And it doesn't even mention or care for the people who have already lived there. Yeah. Well, well, listen, uh, since this is an American history textbook, Land of the Brave, we're calling it, <laughs> we're trying to focus on the United States winning Texas and the Western Territories from Mexico. We're really showing Texas as a model of manifest destiny, one of the most central and compelling stories in our nation's history. <laughs> I thought the manifest destiny was when Americans decided that God was to support them when they killed and destroyed them on their way to the West. Yeah, not to mention that thousands of American Indians relocated or killed, just for one example. Exactly. Um, can we please have one of our parent representatives say something? Well, I think the young people here have a point. If we're teaching our students that Mexican and Texan land, which is territory to be taken, how is that going to play out in the hallways? We, we, we pride ourselves in raising these loving young people who embrace diversity. How do you think I'm going to feel when I know my child's reading a book that says their uncles, their cousins, their grandparents are coming from the people who are just taking up space on God-given American soil. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do you even know what the U.S. is the Navy Tejano to quote-unquote win that land? Have 
you ever heard the expression, if you don't remember the past, you're condemned to live it? I don't have time to remember the past. What does that have to do with me? Are you serious? If my ancestor wants to gain her view, he would turn over in his grave. What if I told you from, let's see here, 1825 to 1829, the U.S. was trying to purchase Texas? I thought, you, uh, I thought Texas belonged to the U.S. Not back then. At the time, the northern Mexican states consisted of Texas, New Mexico, California. Um, these areas were sparsely populated, and the settlers there were rebellious and cared little for Mexican government. They could also be difficult to control. Like the kids in this class? Very funny. <laughs> Anyways, Mexico became concerned about the security of its northern states. In the 1830s, they began requiring passports for the entrance into Mexico from the north. In an attempt to stop U.S. colonization of Texas, Mexico refused to allow slaves to be brought into, its, into Texas. Texas had slaves? Mexico is a very proud country and wouldn't sell its northern territory. They were angry that the U.S. immigrants ignored their laws. Many American leaders viewed Mexico as an arrogant and unreasonable country, especially in its refusing to sell its northern states. It's kind of similar to today, except the other way around. They should have built a wall. <laughs> you, you do know how our Tejano ancestors got hassled in the 19th century, right? Um, our ancestors? What's it say, John? Hard. I used to spend the last few months in the class. You should know what they say, Hanos. Hanos were the best kids living, and Texas were the best kids living before. Remember, the treaty was made after Americans won. Here. Um, in the notes we got the other day, it was the United States had to pay fifteen million dollars. Had to pay fifteen million dollars. Only fifteen million dollars for all of that land. Hmm. Let's go back to April second, eighteen forty-two, when Texas was an independent republic. Yeah. 
Freedom Fund Media. I am running to be secretly. I have been taken hostage by the Mexicans. They have given me a choice. Either join the Mexican army or go to prison. I'm chosen to join their army. Don't worry, we will see each other one day in America. I wanted to tell you that I love you and to take care of each other. I don't have time to make this long. Let's get a little bit more. Teresa, I think it's time we go with other Tejano families to Mexico. Okay, but it took my father, your husband, and other Tejano families to leave and be there. My friend Anna's family is staying. If we go, they feel the country for the rest of my life. Go with it. We'll be like this when you're returning here. I know it would be hard, but I can find a job and you can go to a new school. Are you really considering this? Don't you care about my father? That's what you're doing against me, so what can be done? Think about what's more important, our lives or our land. Hmm. Our land, we come to father, father and has protect us from our ancestors. No matter what our rules are for us, the life will always be ours. We must end up for ourselves. I guess you're right. It's probably what your father would have wanted for us. In the 15 pages I read based on the Vietnam War, there is not one representation of the Montserrat who fought aside the Americans. This book needs a better representation of all of us. Shut up. <laughs> 
mention the labor of the enslaved people that it took to build them. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I get it. This is going to be one of those everything's wrong with mainstream America meetings. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I don't write the books. I just feel the concerns and convey them to the company. You should complain to them. Don't get irritated with me. We need to make the textbooks fill the needs of the largest buyers, Texas, California, and Florida. We can't just go making smaller textbooks for every district in the country. Hi, my name is Kay Wilshire. I go to Durham School of the Arts. I'm a, si I'm a sixth grader, rising seventh grader. And I have to say, that's a pretty sorry excuse for misrepresenting American history. Don't you know that representation matters, just like Black Lives Matter? Amen. Yeah. It's how we it's how we teach our kids today, and that affects how they treat people, treat those kind of people in real life. These are one of the main ways we can make sure America's next generation is its best self. Representations do matter, and so does shining light on all the injustices wherever they occur. Mm -hmm. It's just like what George Washington Williams said when he went to the Congo. What? You don't even know who he is? George Washington Williams was an African American journalist who exposed the true horrors of the rubber and ivory trades in the Congo. The rubber and ivory trades in the Congo, or the exploitation of rubber and ivory trades in the Congo, helped helped build them the machinery that we use today. Helping develop cures for disease and giving protection to the citizens. 
Your Majesty's government has sequestered our land, burned our towns, enslaved our women and children, stolen our property, and committed other crimes too numerous to mention. Presumptuous Negro American journalist George Washington Williams meets Her Majesty King Leopold II making false accusations and promoting slander. <laughs> Many people can't advocate for themselves, 
and this is all because of the Colton mining industry in the Congo Free State. successful here in Lebanon. The silk industry has been collapsing because of the great amount of industrialization and other countries starting to produce silk. 36% of the gross domestic product here in Lebanon is related to silk. Because of this, I no longer have a stable job. I've been trying to do little things to keep myself fed and well. I am thinking of moving to the States with the hope to encounter better opportunities. Sincerely, George Dow. 27-year-old George Dow travels to Philadelphia on a ship from the city of Latrude in northern Lebanon in 1889. Later, he moves to Charleston, South Carolina and opens up a dry goods shop. Hey, come in. Hey. Come on. Hey, George. What can I get for you today? May I please stop to the newspaper, please? Sure, it's right over there. Hello, can I get some dry dates? Okay. <laughs> Here are your dry dates. Can I also get a yard dry fabric as well, if you have some? Huh. Well, my dry goods store isn't, doesn't just sell dry things. <laughs> I sell all sorts of things like poetry and canned foods. No, I'm pretty sure that's what I want. Okay. <laughs> here you go. Thank you. I think it's just sign here. Have a nice day. Bye. You know, George, it would be best if you actually naturalized so if your store is legal. What do you mean? What is naturalization? The Naturalization Act was passed in 1790. The Act made it so that people from Europe can be naturalized and African Americans cannot. Mm. In America, citizenship has always been tied up with race. The Act states that the criteria for naturalization is two years of residency, proof of good moral character, and oath to the Constitution. The Act also said that you couldn't be naturalized if your father had not been a citizen of the United States for two years. It's basically the way you'll take a right to an American citizen. That does sound nice. But I'm not white. Won't that be a problem? In 1909, a previous judge, District Judge Newman, argued that the term three white persons refers to race rather than color, and people with a fair or dark complexion should not be granted naturalization, provided that the person seeking naturalization comes within the white or Caucasian. 
Meanwhile, at Judge Smith's home, Judge Smith is waiting for the food. He decides to read the newspaper. What? Why are those Syrians coming into our country? I swear I'll do everything in my power not to let them in. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm going 
to sleep today because I'm really happy that I got naturalized. <laughs> Thank you. 